way or another. Change in the real estate industry is constant. Now, if we go back before 1993, we can see that real estate was pretty consistent for a long period of time. When I first got into the real estate business, we were using three ring binders and we got updates to our three ring binders. They called them errata. And we would go in and sometimes we do pen and ink changes in our books. And then the new technology came out and that was glue. And so they took the pages and they glued them together and then they had books and the books came out twice. Uh, every two weeks we got a book. We got a, a book for single families and then two weeks later we'd get a book for uh, condos. So we had this alternating, we had these books and these books had the inventory and they were confidential and we weren't supposed to give them away to anybody and consumers weren't allowed to have them. And then every a quarter we'd have what we called a comp book. So if we wanted to go back and look at prior sales, we could do so in a comp book. So none of this was digitized. And then around 1979, 78, 79, we got dumb terminals where terminals tied into a major computer network and we had thermal paper. And this was the start of the digital technologies in real estate in the 80s. Now, I was president in 1993 of the San Diego Association of Realtors. I throw this clip out there because it's very apparent if you were paying attention at the time that we were on the verge of something changing in the world. And I wasn't quite sure what it was, but I came up with this uh, comment. Uh, I said, don't let the doom and gloomers get you down because we were coming out of a recession. But I believe we were on the verge of the greatest social and economic explosion that the world had ever seen. This was in 1993. And what happened is about 1995, we started to see the dot-com bubble. And that's exactly what changed the world, changed economies, changed everything. Now, in 1993, in San Diego, we had somebody, his name was Richard Jansen. And Richard Jansen had this idea that you could put kiosks in Long's drugstores and people could shop for houses in drugstores. Now, we needed a contract with the MLS to do this. And so he went out and got a contract with our MLS in San Diego, and I was president of the Board of Realtors, and I thought this was a great idea to let consumers see what was available. Now, if you look at this, at this brochure, at the bottom it says, Home Select Kiosk, the automated seven-minute home finder. Now, a couple of thoughts. Number one, who goes to the drugstore to look for houses? I'm not really sure. And number two, who's going to spend seven minutes looking at it? But this was state-of-the-art. This was technology. There were 50 of these things in drugstores around San Diego County because San Diego is a great place to experiment with new ideas. So this is what we had in 93. Now, also, in the early 90s, the National Association of Realtors was not sitting idly on their hands. They were looking at this. The MLS vendors in the real estate industry, they did a white paper. Arthur Young, the major accounting firm and consulting firm, they did a report for the National Association of Realtors, EDS, Electronic Data Systems. Uh, they did a report. Gallup did a report. And then the National Association of Realtors put together a presidential advisory group to look at all these reports and determine the future of the real estate industry. And this was in the early 1990s. So here's the MLS vendor white paper, you know, input to NAR business plan regarding the future of MLS because we were concerned in the 90s about the future of MLS. And then the MLS Technology the Presidential Advisory Group put out this report, The Future of MLS. And again, this was in the early 90s. And if you look at the charge, it says to assess the current trends in technology applications to real estate, especially as it extends to or includes MLS, uh, multiple listing service, information delivery systems to make recommendations concerning what actions the realtor family should take to assure that it maintains control of MLS systems. And that was key. And if you look at the vision that the realtor is the primary provider distributor of all information needed by consumers in a real estate transaction. And this was the position that we took as an industry in the 90s as the technology started to change. We decided we needed to take control of our one of our most valuable assets because nobody else had this asset, and that was the inventory of available properties for sale. And to keep the realtor central to the real estate transaction. Now this, again, a member services report put out by the National Association of Realtors. So it's very important to understand that your national association was looking very hard at changes to the industry in the 90s and did some very bold things to move everybody forward. Now, the results of one of these studies, and you see that 
the study divided up realtors into three groups, established successes, young lions, and survivors. Now today we have the same thing. We, have, we don't have young lions anymore. I actually thought I was a young lion back in those days. But what we have today, we call them YPNs. We call them millennials, whatever, right? Well, we always had this distinction in the real estate industry of certain age groups of people. And this was the case in the 90s as well. And today it's the case. Now, in 1993, Billy Chi, another one of my real estate heroes, Billy Chi, who was with locations, Prudential Locations in Hawaii, Billy Chi said famously, the lion is coming over the hill and realtors, you're like a bunch of chihuahuas arguing over the bones. And be careful, they're going to devour you. And so this was radical thinking, and, but at the end of Billy Chi's speech, he says, fellow realtors, let's become the lion. We're sitting in this position. We have the assets. We have the resources, and there's no reason that we should let the future be taken from us by outsiders.